guys, this your boy, Barca boy, 103, we are back in the usual recording space, thank god for that, that car was tight and you know, the quality wasn't that great, but you know what, life moves on, if you gotta make a Barca video, you gotta make a Barca video, but we're back in the normal settings, I can now bang some stuff and move around freely, and we have a lot of news to talk about, of course, big updates on the decision of Nico Williams and also the transfer of Denny Olmo as per usual. Some big movements and decisions as well in regards to the futures of the two Joao's. Big update on Victor Roque, sir, where El Hilal have made an approach to Barcelona and apparently selling Victor Roque will help Barcelona sign both Nico Williams and Denny Olmo. We have some updates on the friendly match that took place on Thursday as well. More details on who played well, who didn't. Uh, big renewal update on Denny Rodriguez, of course, doing so well for the under-19 uh, under Euros. And finally, big updates in regards to FFP, where Joan Laporta has reconstructured the Barca Studio economic lever into shares that hopefully Nike and Spotify will help Barcelona invest in, therefore bringing us back to the 1-1 rule. We also have uh, updates on the VIP seats at the Spotify Camp now, and a new short sponsor for the first time in the club's history. All, of course, entail the lead to Barcelona returning to the 1-1 rule as soon as possible, as Juan Laporta will be traveling hopefully to America with the squad to finalize these operations. But before we get into it, make sure you guys smash that like button down below. Let's try to get the 200 likes in this video. Be very much appreciated. Also, if you're new, make sure you subscribe down below if you haven't already, and let's get into it. Let's start off with the transfer news. Over the past 24 hours, ladies and gentlemen, it is time where Barcelona are expecting an imminent answer from Nico Williams. Could have even answered before I upload this video. I hope so. I don't think so. That's why I'm banking on the fact he's not. And that's why I'm including this section in the video. We have now reached a point where everyone in the media is in agreement that Barcelona and Nico Williams camp have reached a full agreement on personal terms, contract length, salary, details, TV rights, merchandise, whatever it may be, full agreement on his contract. Barcelona have told Nico Williams' camp they are ready to immediately pay his release clause if he gives the green light. All we're waiting for now is the player's final decision. Tony Juan Marti came out saying that these are vital hours ahead for the future of Nico Williams, a move to Barcelona. Could be a move to PSG or stay at Athletic Club. The player can give the answer in the next few hours. If Nico says no to Barcelona, the club will go all out and sign Denny Olmo almost immediately. For Benzio Romano, also confirmed the news saying that Nico Williams' decision can come at any time now and Barcelona are very, very, very confident. Let's wait and see, lads. If you don't see a here we go video from me this weekend for Nico Williams, there's your effing answer. I'm... Uh, I don't know, man. I, I'm not worried about PSG. I'm worried. I'm worried about him staying at Athletic Club. I don't think PSG posed a threat. Yes, they've offered more money. Good for them. They have money. Whoopty freaking do. Life's not about money. It's about you know, enjoying life, being around people that you love, and living life to the fullest. If you want to go for money, have a crack. Don't care. We will see. We will see again once. Once Nico Williams says yes or no, that is it. If he says yes, here we go. Done deal. We've got him. If he says no, we're in the mud. So let's see what happens. Let's hope by the end of this weekend, we will get an answer as I expected. I told you guys it would happen probably later in the week. When these journalists, by the way, come out saying in the next few hours, they mean next few days. When they say next minutes, it means hours. When they say hours, it means days. So, of course, this came out about yesterday afternoon. So it's, you know, the next day. And, you know, multiple hours have passed and no answer. But I do suspect by the end of this weekend, we will get an answer from Nico Williams in regards to what he wants to do with his future. Again, the options, in my opinion, are quite clear. Move to Barcelona or stay at Athletic Club. Now, regardless of the fact whether or not Barcelona signed Nico Williams, the club are very interested in Denny Olmo and continue to move forward in his operation as there will be a meeting at some point today with his agents to discuss further on personal terms and also on the formula that RB Leipzig are expecting for the player. Now, Muno Motivo came out saying that there will be, of course, a meeting later on today between Barcelona and Denny Olmo's agents in which the club and the player's entourage continue to work and find a way to make his signing a reality. For Mr. Mano came out saying again that a sale is needed from Barcelona to sign both Denny Olmo 
and Nico Williams. Of course, Nico Williams says no, we can sign Denny Omo by himself, no problems whatsoever. Ever. Now, Jean de Miro came out saying that my feeling is that Barcelona will end up finding a formula to send Denny Almo and he will end up signing for Barcelona. His feelings are always, you know, correct because he knows everyone around Barcelona. The man has the president's number for crying out loud. So, good to take that that if that as you know a sign of something that in the end if Barcelona reach an agreement with RB Leipzig and Denny Almo, the operation will happen. They won't hold off on it or anything like that. So, that's an important take. And finally, Matteo Marito came out saying that Barcelona and Bayern Munich are the two clubs in the race for Denny Olmo. Barcelona's focus right now is on Nico Williams, and they absolutely need to sell, to sell someone from the forward line for Denny Olmo. It is true that Denny Olmo would like to return to Barcelona and play for his boyhood club, but it also depends on offers coming in. He would potentially be sold for around 60, 65 million euros. Barcelona's focus continues to be Nico Williams, and Denny Olmo operation is also alive, but it's not as advanced as some would have you to believe. Essentially, we're in, you know, the medium stages. Look, with Danny Almo, again, the reason why there's a lot of uproar in the fan base because this signing makes no sense. He's a pure luxury signing in the current situation of Barcelona, and I don't see why the club are pushing for this and facilitating this type of move. Now, in regards to Bayern Munich's interest, I think they're interested, sure, but they're not making any moves like we are. We are the only club that have sent Ari Leipzig a bid, and we're the only club talking to Danny Almo in regards to personal terms. Like I mentioned a few videos ago, multiple times, no other top club in Europe want Denny Omo. They see him either as a fourth option this summer or a luxury signing. Again, Man City already have Bernard Silva, Kevin De Bruyne, Jack Grealish, Phil Foden. Uh, of course, uh, Bayern Munich are going for uh, Desiree Doi. They're going for Xavi Simons as well, which we should probably be going for Xavi Simons, especially with him being on loan and this costing, you know, 60 million euros. Every other, you know, team either has an attacking midfielder of the uh, level of the quality of Denny Omo. Or they're not interested. That's the reality of it. It's basically, I think, a one-horse race. There's been some reports, of course, over recent days about Man City being interested. I believe those are wide, wide of the mark. Again, for the value, for the play that you get, I think it's, it is worth it. But we just do not need Danny Olmo. I, I just don't get it. But we'll see. Uh, let's hope we sign Nico Williams. And after that, we'll assess and we'll see what's going on. Of course, if we don't sign Nico Williams, if we bring in Danny Olmo, we play him on the left. It's like, he's basically what? And yes, a kind of profile on the left. He's not a pure winger. He's a midfielder playing out right, and that'll become quite evident. It's like Gavi or Pedri playing on the wing. Uh, we, we, we had that, of course, under Chad. Where again, it could work, especially in those bigger games. You know, your PSGs, Real Madrid, Atletico Madrid, but against those, you know, medium opposition sides like Athletic Club, Villarreal, uh, Sociedad. Uh, any lower teams in La, La, La Liga as well, it will be very, very difficult to break those kind of teams down with the, mid with the, with the winger like Danny Olmo's profile. So again, we'll wait and see with Danny Olmo. Uh, we are making movements. We'll see what happens in the meeting later on today as Barcelona do still intend to sign both Danny Olmo and Nico Williams this summer transfer window. Now, as the summer transfer window winds down a bit, Barcelona have becoming more clear on what they want to do in regards to the situation of the two Joao's. Firstly, in regards to Cancelo, Sport came out saying that Barcelona have informed Joao Cancelo that they would like to continue only on a loan deal in the event of a transfer of Barcelona will only be willing to pay around 20 million euros and Jorge Mendes has been trying to work on a loan deal but as of right now there has been no success again Man City are at a point now where they just want to sell to the highest bidder so if you know Saudi Arabia come in and bid more than 20 million euros they'll happily accept that and you know push him to go in that direction where Barcelona still remain keen on him for Mr. Mono keeps mentioning it as well that he's the number one target for Barcelona to reinforce the right back position but again right now all focuses on Nico Williams so once that deal comes through and if that falls through I'll probably go for Denny Almo and then Cancelo I think in the end the club will make somewhat of a push for Cancelo I'm very very actually confident in that will not Man City uh, accept that uh, push remains to be seen but again the option of Cancelo is still on the table and it's still being evaluated by Barcelona and we'll see how things develop over the next few weeks again we're looking at probably middle uh, to end of August for a deal like this but the other Joao is looking a bit more complicated bruv it is Joao Felix who was training with Atletico Madrid a few days ago, he began preseason with them, and guess what? He's training by himself in the corner again. Now, the RDRS came out saying that Joao Felix will not be moving to Barcelona this summer due to them not being too interested in the player anymore, and also the conditions set by Atletico Madrid. Apparently, Aston Villa still dreaming of him, still trying to make a formula and trying to make a push for him. Benfica also interested in the background as well. Again, if this operation happens, it will be at the end of the window. And again, as we get close to the end of the window, I would say there is a bit of a higher chance that Joao Felix will come back. Again, it depends as well on what answer the situation will be like at the end of the window, uh, whether or not we get Denny Olmo and Nico Williams or not. All these things will have uh, implications on when that board will make a push that they will probably for Cancelo uh, for Joao Felix. I think, you know what? 
just cut your ties. At this point, he's already trained with Atletico Madrid. It's, you know, game is gone at this point. I would just let it go. And I honestly, we have Una Hernandez and Daniel Rodriguez. I'd rather give them a, a try at left wing than bring back Joel Felix. That's just my prerogative. That's just my opinion. I know a lot of you guys would disagree with that. But that's how I see it personally. I think we have enough left to wingers. Especially, if, of course, I'm, in, my head, we're, in my head, we're signing Danny Olmo and Nico Williams. So... With that being said, I don't think Joel Felix is of use to Barcelona. Like, of course, he was last summer. We needed to work just first on forward, so he was better than no one, especially with loaning Abdi and Ansu uh, basically uh, a week beforehand as well. So, we'll wait and see how things start out with Felix's future, but again, just further further away from Barcelona, whereas Cancelo is still in and around the mix. Let's now discuss the players that have been rumored to leave Barcelona over the past 24 hours without a shadow of a doubt the biggest news over the past 24 hours as we're recording this video because we don't have a Nico Williams here we go is on the exit rumors in regards to Vitor Roque now the original reports came in from Saudi Arabia saying that El, uh, what was it? El Hilal made an approach to Barcelona they want to sign Vitor Roque they see him as a top target they're like thinking okay Saudi reports not that serious Fabrizio Romano came out confirming it saying that El Hilal have approached Barcelona for Victor Roque as reported by the Saudi media. Roque and his camp must decide their next move with Barcelona potentially open to selling. This could be a crucial step for FFP but depends on Roque's decision. Now there have been reports since uh, this you know push from Fabrizio Romano from Victor Navarro saying that Victor Roque's potential departure would help and advance the signing of both Nico Williams and Denny Almo. So in the comments down below, let me know right now. Would you sell Victor Roque to bring in Denny Almo and Nico Williams? My answer, I'm on the fence. I've, I believe in Victor Roque. I've, see, I've watched his games. I know the ability of the player. It's just not translating on the pitch. And if it's not translating on the pitch, we don't got time. Cut your losses and move on. Now, again, for me, it all depends on how much the price is. Are we selling him for the same amount? Profit. A loss. All these things have implications. Now, Sport came out saying that El Hilal are expected to make an offer of around 30 million euros fixed for Barcelona for Victor Roque, and that's why the club are open to selling. Now, again, remember the deal for Victor Roque that we signed him for: 30 million fixed plus 30 in variables, and those variables being difficult variables: Champions League wins, La Liga wins, Ballon d'Ors, stuff like that. Remember those rumors at the time that Barcelona, these variables are achieved, will have no problem paying them. That was the narrative. So these variables. Ain't getting a reach. Forget about that. So we paid 30 million for him, of course, 5 million every single January until it's paid. So, so far, I uh, sorry, every June. So, so far, we've only paid about 5 million for Victor Roque. And Tony Juan Martin came out saying that if Barcelona sells Victor Roque, they need to get at least 40 million euros because this way they can give 10 million euros to Federico Pariense. So, again, the club want to get back what they paid for him. So, if they sell him for 30, then they give a sell on clause to uh, Federico Pariense of 10 million euros. So, they only get net 20. So they want to sell him for 40, that way they can at least get the net 30 that they spent him for, give the 10 million to his uh, old club, everyone can be happy. Now let's rephrase the question in the comments down below. Would you sell Victor Roque for the exact same price, of course net-wise, that we pocket, that we bought him for in exchange for bringing in Nico Williams and Denny Olmo? Me personally, call me stupid, I would say this. If I'm getting the Victor Roque that I saw in Brazil, I would say no, I wouldn't do it. But I'm getting the Victor Roque that I'm hearing in the media who cannot get, who's who's being shy in training, cannot, you know, have any touches, cannot even get in the freaking first team rondo in training, then I'm selling him. That's how I personally see it. So, depends on the offer that comes in. Of, of course, Victor Roque's decision as well will be massive. I think in the end, if a bid comes in of around 40 million euros, this will 1 billion percent happen. I mean, if you tell Barcelona, the board, sell Victor Roque to bring in your two dream targets, Nico Williams and Denny Almo. They're doing it 100%. And getting the, you know, getting on paper 10 million euros more than what we paid for Victor Roque uh, just six months ago, that's a that's a win. Especially with, the, you know, the rumors that are coming out how poorly he's been doing and all this stuff. Seeing a lot of people bash this signing online. Oh, we spent 40 million euros in a, in a, in a financial crisis for Victor Roque. Take your head out of the set. Pull your head out of your absolute thick arse. We needed a striker. There was no one available in Europe. We went and got the best striker available in the Brazilian league. Go look at the tweets. Go look at the videos during the time. Everyone was glazing Victor Roque. And rightfully so, he's playing well. We, we formulate a brilliant operation where we were paying 30 fix, 5 million euro payments over the next, you know, 6 to 7 years every June. Another 30 million euros in almost impossible uh, add-ons. Remember what the rumors were at the time. 
The club are happy to pay the variables if they are achieved because they're very, very difficult. Ballon d'Or, Champions League, La Liga, titles, goals, all those are variables. So if he gets an unbelievable 50 goal season, wins the Ballon d'Or, we have to pay uh, his club 30 million. Absolutely no problem. So if we get the money back for him, who can say this is a terrible operation? And, and you know, on paper, you're technically making t making 10 million, where of course you won't be on paper. So we'll wait and see with Victor Roque. It's a very interesting situation, but again, an approach has been made now by El Hilal, and we'll wait and see what their offer is officially and what Barcelona's perspective is on the deal as well. But again, with Victor Roque, I think right now all options are on the table, staying at Barcelona, even alone, and of course, this being a sale as well. Now, an exit that is according to the media guaranteed at this point is the exit of the Barcelona captain in Sergi Roberto. For Mr. Romano came out saying that Sergi Roberto will 100% leave Barcelona. Now of course you've been watching the videos over the past few weeks I've been saying a lot that I think Roberto will stay. I don't want him to stay and to be honest I don't care if he stays cool if he doesn't stay cool i'm very much on the fence of what he contributes to barcelona on the pitch and off the pitch all that kind of stuff especially after his i would say good season last season i'm i still think he's gonna stay so watch let's see if, if i if i'm right over Fabrizio romano i ain't gonna shut up about it so you know let's see i still think despite Fabrizio romano saying this i still believe that roberto will end up staying i think once we get back to the 1-1 rule he doesn't sign with anyone oh your contract is still valid you want to come back come back we're all chilling we're all vibing until I see an official announcement, to be honest, I won't believe it. Especially with him being a free agent, unless he says yes or no, unless he puts pen and paper, anything can change in a matter of a moment. Look at Dobic, for example. He's about to go to Atletico Madrid, Roma came in, now he's going to Roma. I mean, in the market, when there's release clauses and free agents being involved, anything can happen in a split second. Of course, when you're negotiating with clubs, like, for example, Denny Oma RB Leipzig, very meticulous, it's very difficult for stuff to change very quickly, but release clause and free agent moves... Anything can happen in a matter of moments. And I still firmly believe, based on my opinion, not information I've been given or anything like that, just based on my opinion, I still think Roberto will be the captain next season. So we'll wait and see how things turn out. But again, the media, and not just Fabrizio Romano, but Teo Marito and everyone else in Catalonia media as well, are adamant that Roberto will not be continuing out Barcelona next season. Which also means, by the way, their Stegen will be the first team captain. Now, a sale in Europe that Barcelona could hopefully massively benefit from is the sale of Jean-Claire Todibo from Nice to Juventus. Apparently, Juventus are ready with a big bid where they're going to offer a loan with an option or mandatory buy, buy option where the option to buy will be very easy or the mandatory buy option next summer for Todibo for around 30 to 35 million euros. And of course, Barcelona do get 20% of any future sale from Nice. So we can expect them to get around 5 to 7 million euros from this deal. I've been banging on about Toribo's percent of future sale now for three transfer windows. It looks like finally it will happen this summer. So keep your eyes peeled on this deal where again, Barcelona can cash out quite a hefty amount from it. Again, depends on how you've been to structure the deal. They get the loan with the buy option, loan with the mandatory, loan with the buy option, but the buy option basically is guaranteed to be mandatory. What's clear is that the deal will not be this summer, like in regards to getting the fee. It's going to be next time where it's going to be uh, on a loan deal, whether or not the loan is going to be structured. That's what remains to be seen. But again, keep our eyes peeled where we hopefully will receive some of this transfer fee for Jean-Claire Toribo. Let's now discuss some contract renewal updates around the first team at Barcelona. Just one update, it ain't even around the first team, it is around La Masia in Danny Rodriguez, who is doing very well at the under-19 Euros. I mentioned last video, I didn't know what it was, I thought it was the Olympics, but confirmed now it is the Euros. Now, Rosalero Amor Deportivo came out saying that Danny Rodriguez will sign a five-year contract renewal with Barcelona after playing the under-19 Euro final this Sunday. He will be a fundamental uh, piece for Barcelona Athletic this season with options, of course, to train in the first team. Barcelona had an option to unilaterally extend his contract for two years, but they sent Denny a new economic and sporting offer to ensure his immediate future, seeing that many clubs were trying to tempt him due to his progression and his performances. His agent, of course, is your boy, Fini. Zahavi. So overall, of course, this deal was almost on the verge of collapsing during March and April time. But this remontada and of course him switching to uh, Fini Zahavi being his agent, of course, benefited Barcelona massively since, you know, Juan Laporta loves Fini Zahavi in more ways than you probably think. So overall, fantastic renewal. Again, he's one of the bright players that are coming up. He had a really good season last season with Barca Athletic and also with the uh, juvenile side as well, doing absolutely brilliantly as well with the under-19s at the Euros. But in Spain's, uh, I would say, probably best player alongside a few others. And he's, you know, scoring goals, getting assists. And we'll see how he does 
in the final, his stock could even rise even more. Uh, since then, we could pretty cool for Spain to do a double, you know, actual Euros and the other 19 Euros. So, we'll wait and see on the end of the guys. But again, he's already committed his future to Barcelona. And we'll wait and see how he does progress sporting-wise during the following season. Let's now discuss some injury updates around the first team at Barcelona. The one update we do have is on the injury of Gavi, where Lerlivo have come out saying that from the club, the message regarding Gavi is maybe it will take us a whole season to be able to see the best version of him again. The most important thing is that he returns healthy and without any relapses. So the club are basically telling the media we will not see peak Gavi that we saw, of course, pre-injury until maybe next season. Because again, he needs a lot of time to get back to match rhythm and sharpness and all this crap. Look, of course, this was coming. Not surprised by this. And I will tell you guys this again. We will not see Gavi until... 2025 on the pitch people think oh he's gonna come back in november he's gonna come back in december we will not see him until 2025 on the pitch for barcelona when he comes back he's gonna need some time i think he'll probably play a few big games like 10 minutes 15 minutes then half an hour then come in at half time then start games for 60 minutes then 70 minutes then 100 and then 100 and then 90 minutes i don't think we'll see gabby play a full 90 minutes Till probably what March or April, I would say. I think there's probably a March international break, so probably after that. Like, it's gonna take some time for him, and I think he'll need at least a month of training once he gets the medical green light as well. So, his return will be very, very long. I would not, you know, plan for the following season with a, you know, a fit Gavi. Again, this is another reason why midfield signing is imperative and so important for Barcelona this summer. But again, hopefully for the following season, the 25 26 season, we can get a peak prime Gavi back in our squad. Let's now discuss some of the news surrounding Barcelona over the past 24 hours. First, we do have an update on Thursday's friendly against UE Olot. And again, more details coming out about this game, which of course was taking place behind closed doors. Now, first, the Juan Martin came out saying that Mikal Fey, who had an ankle discomfort, did not play in the friendly match. And also, Una Hernandez had a fever, and that's why he didn't participate either. Of course, a lot of people were mentioning where's Mikal Fey. He hasn't been in the training videos over the past few days and didn't play in this game. A little bit of an ankle discomfort for him. Now, in regards to player performances, firstly, Maskic Palotas came out saying that Victor Roque went unnoticed in the game. He apparently played very poorly, and apparently Pablo Torre, Casado, Mark Bernal were the best players in the friendly game. Amundo um, Rotivo also came out saying that Hansi Flick is very satisfied with the performance and training of Mark Bernal and Casado. Again, each journalist is kind of saying different things. I've seen a lot of journalists even say Victor Roque was the best player during the game, so... Difference of opinion, of course, there's no footage. Oh, there is footage, but not going to release it, so we will never know the reality of the case. Now, there's also reports coming out saying that all our players were very surprised with the physical uh, physicality of the Barcelona players. They played against Girona last week, but the difference has been enormous. Barcelona has been more superior. Mark Bernal, Casado, and Pablo Torre played well in the midfield. This is all crap. This is all glazing Barcelona. I saw this again during uh, when Coman came back. Remember when Coman was a manager, we were playing... Who did we play when Messi was playing in the pink kit? He had that nice assist to Trincao in the pink kit. Like, even in those times, like, oh, Com the other team could barely keep up. Like, I've seen this before. Until I see it with my own eyes, I ain't believing shite. Now, the old coach came out speaking to the media about the game. Of course, everyone's going to be on his case, see how Flix Barcelona is doing. And he came out saying that Victor Roque was the best player during the first half. So, I mean, this is what I mean. You know, some people think he played like crap. Some people think he's good. He said that Victor Roque was the best player for Barcelona in the first half. So, I mean, there you go. Take that as you will. Also asked on the system in which Barcelona played. He said that, look, the player, uh, the playing system reminded me a lot of the old Barcelona with the 4-3-3 plan and a very intense high press. On the physical level, I saw their players strong and demanding in a way I had not seen in previous years. I think he's also doing a bit of glazing as well. Again, I ain't going to believe it until I see it, baby. Now, of course, following this game, like I mentioned in yesterday's video, the players now will have a few days break before traveling to America on Sunday. But even despite having a break, Hansi Flick granted a voluntary training session to the players on Friday, even though it was, you know, day off and even also to, uh, today as well on Saturday, where Mikal Fai, Paul Victor, Clement Longley, Christensen, Lewandowski, and Frankie de Jong did in fact turn up to the Ciudad Sportiva Joan Gamper for training purposes. These are the players doing extra work. So, of course, Mikal Fey, he's injured, makes sense. Pau Victor, just signed, makes sense. Long left, bro. I mean, I don't know what you're trying to do here, but, you know, get, you know, GTFO with that. Get, get out of my face. Christian and Lou does, of course, just came back from vacation, so it makes a bit of sense. And Frankie Diong recovering from his injury. So, these kind of players, apart from Long Let, make sense, uh, especially you know, with their circumstances. I think Long Let's only one here, you know, go and try hard more, and not just say to him, look, buddy. 
You think you're, you think you're cute, but you're not. You're you can play, you can play like you can play like Prime Maldini in preseason, and I would still ship you for free this summer. So we'll wait and see how things do turn out in that regard. We'll wait and see who trains uh, later on today as well. They do mention it, of course, in the media, but of course the team is set to leave tomorrow for America to begin preseason. Now, the final topic that I want to discuss before I end off this video is in regards to Barcelona closing in now on returning to the 1 1 rule in La Liga for the first time in about two and a half weeks or two weeks or so. We do have some FFP updates. Now, Victor Malo came out saying the solution to Barcelona's economic crisis is close to being a reality. Before the end of this month, Barcelona will officially announce the new structure of Barcelona Studios. The club has taken the decision to completely renew the company's structure and bring in real shareholders, namely the club sponsors in Nike, Spotify, and also Ambilight TV. Uh, their shirt as well will be the fourth company, which of course may be... Um, uh, Cupra, which of course has now been official by the club that Cooper will continue as the car sponsor. The decision aims to attract investors who are committed to paying and do not default on their obligations. Spotify and Nike are basically saving Barcelona at this point. The two companies will enter as shareholders in Barca Studios. The structure has already been put in place and will be made official soon. Nike played a decisive role in the club's economic future. Nike will lift the 18 million euro uh, but not paid legal fees that of course the club do owe them. Uh, they will also of course on the historic deal, 100 million sign on bonus, 100 million deal plus variables as well. And Nike's investors will be you know new partners in Barca Studios as well to help agree with the financial fair play rules of La Liga. So essentially, the money that liberal football finance owed us, about 40 million, the club had div divided that into the already, already, you know, sponsors of the club shareholders. So, you know, Nike, Spotify, uh, Amulite, Cupra, they all, you know, owed shares of Barca Studios, paying, of course, that total amount of 40 million euros. So it kind of covers that. So in the end, there'll be investors, they'll earn money based on how well Barcelona Studios does over the next few years, the initiatives and the insightfulness to, you know, increase it. That's all going to be, of course, absolutely massive. And all I can say is freaking finally hopefully this structure will be announced soon we have of course other deals happening as well uh firstly the vip seats where the club released an official statement saying that barcelona have now sold around 95 percent of the seats and vip spaces in the future spotify cap no most were inquired for a period of between eight to ten years and it is expected the new stadium will generate around 120 million euros in income a year so in about 10 years time the stadium will pay off the stadium debt you could say and of course after that just going to be pure and utter profit now alongside the restructure of borsa studios alongside with the vip seats being confirmed as well almost you know 95 percent of them being sold the club also secured another sponsor and it is for the shorts we'll take it we'll take it Mundo Portivo came out saying the agreement has been reached with medusa to become Barcelona's sponsor for these shorts and it will be paying around 5 million euros a season this will, of course will help with FFP Medusa is an Emirati company that you know manufactures you know stuff for surfing and all this crap like that they will become Barcelona's first ever short sponsor the logo will go on top of the Nike logo starting from the Juan Gaper match or even in the La Liga opener against Valencia as you can see the image there on the right hand side where Pablo Torre is just above that Nike logo on his left leg that's where the sponsorship will be We'll take it. We are we're sponsoring FC to try to squeeze the club dry of money. We're just putting logos on everywhere to get money. I would not be surprised if the club slap another sponsorship on the sleeve as well. Of course, you have Ambilight on one side. The other side, you have, you know, your La Liga, Champions League patches. They might just put a random another one over here. Just like, you know what? Just get all the money that we can. And we absolutely, of course, will take it so hopefully all this is enough to get to the woman rule by the end of this month i mean i don't know there is a positive thing to note as well the club have officially announced that Juan Laporta, of course the president will travel with the squad to america rafael uste will stay in barcelona of course the vice president now but the president going to america is of course big signing these deals of course not only with the manufacturing uh, company for the shorts but also with uh, nike the new nike renewal then becoming a shareholder of barca studio signing a deal with uh, spotify then being of course shareholder of barca studio so there could be a big big move for laporta going there to hopefully finalize these very very crucial deals that barcelona desperately need so again we use our emotion we're getting now hopefully to the uh, home stretch the final run and let's just pray to god we can get to the one rule as soon as possible that way we can do some important market activities to improve the squad ahead of the start of the season in just under 20 days time so that was my reaction to the Barcelona news over the past 24 hours. So if you guys enjoyed this video, if you did, make sure to leave a like and of course in the comments down below, let me know your thoughts on everything we discussed. The main thing I want to first, of course, 
is on the sale of Victor Roque. Would you sell him or not? For what price? And would you sell him knowing that you could end up bringing in both Nico Williams and Danny Almo? Your thoughts on Nico Williams coming in? That he'll get the green light by the end of this weekend or not? Danny Almo, you think he's worth it? Would you sign him or not? Also on the Joao's, your thoughts on their situation? Would you bring them both back? One of them back? Maybe even neither? And finally, your thoughts on Laporta making these plays to hopefully bring Barcelona back to the 1-1 rule. And of course, make sure you guys subscribe down below if you haven't already. And I will see you guys next time on the channel. Hopefully for Nico Williams, here we go. Take care and Forza Barca.